Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on Legends of Tomorrow Season 2. So this is going to be my review for Episode 9, otherwise entitled Raiders of the Lost Art. So obviously before we go ahead, spoiler warning, there will be spoilers within this review. We're going to go over the main points within this episode. So if you haven't watched the episode, go watch it, then come back to this video later on. Now I did upload a Flash review earlier on. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, congested and a bit hectic now that Flash and Legends are on the same night. So if you want to go check that out after you've watched this video, it'd be very much appreciated. Now in this episode of Legends of Tomorrow, we headed to the 1960s, and to be specific in regards to location, we headed to Hollywood. Now the thing I really enjoyed about the opening of this episode is that we actually got to see what happened to Rip Hunter at the end of episode 1 this season when the Wave Rider was under attack by Damien Dark and the Nazis. So we actually did find out that Rip had a piece of the Spear of Destiny and that he actually knows the other pieces locations which will come into effect later in this season, maybe even next episode. But we actually found out how Rip ended up in the 1960s and it's because he actually touched the time drive which are, uh, yeah, pretty damn insane. Now, I thought it was funny that, like, Nate labelled uh, Damien Dark, Eobard Thorne, and Malcolm Merlin as the Legion of Doom after hearing it from a Hanna-Barbera cartoon when he was younger. Now, that cartoon, without them actually naming it, is obviously Super Friends, which, if you haven't watched it, I watched it when I was younger because it was always on Cartoon Network and stuff like that, but it was essentially like the Justice League show back in the day, and the group that the Super Friends had diverse was the Legion of Doom. It had people like... Lex Luthor, uh, Black Manta, um, Brainiac, all of them. So it was pretty cool. Now that first scene in 1967 with uh, Malcolm Merlin and Damien Dark just walking down a Los Angeles street was pretty funny. And it was pretty damn cool when they uh, flipped the circumstances when those uh, bikers attempted to rob them. And uh, yeah, those bikers didn't have a happy ending. But holy crap, the movie that Rip was making was called Legends and even had like a Vandal Savage copy. Also, when Rip said uh, this Vandal Savage character had no menace to him, was that like a stab at Vandal Savage from season one? Because that was like one thing that a lot of like people complained about, like Vandal Savage didn't feel that threatening. So if that's the case, sick burn. The breakout of Rip from the police station was great in this episode. I thought the way that Arthur Darvel, who's the actor that plays Rip, uh, played this Phil, like the uh, transformed version of Rip, if you want to call him that, in such a different way. I thought it was really cool. But Malcolm and Damien in that police station, though, that was hilarious. From the opening point when, like, Damien just looks at the cop and just, like, smiles and keeps walking, and then when, like, Malcolm Merlin just, like, kills that officer with, like, a quick shank to the side, to then, like, them waiting in the elevator with the music. It's too good. Like, those two guys together are really cool. Like, I would watch, like, a show just based off them. Just imagine, like, a buddy cop show with Malcolm Merlin and Damien Dark. That'd be pretty cool. Now, we had a pretty interesting subplot for this episode with Rip's friend on the film set. I think he was actually the prop master for the movie. That was actually George Lucas, and he uh, quits film school and changes Ray Palmer and Nate Haywood's lives. Not for the better. He never makes Star Wars, which inspired Ray, and he never made Indiana Jones, which inspired Nate. Like, Vixen even drops a You're Our Only Hope line, which George Lucas... Uh, gives like an excited look at. So it looks like a uh, vixen may have inspired a part of Star Wars. And obviously she wouldn't know anything about Star Wars because she's from the past. Now I thought it was awesome that Rip's repressed memories were being used to like write the screenplay of his movie. Like he was even writing about the Spear of Destiny. So yeah, he's got a lot of memories there to, that he was writing down. Now just quickly, that part when Jax and Sarah walk past Stein uh, with Heatwave in the medical bay, and Stein like casually says that he's doing brain surgery, it just had me cracking up, especially when Jax makes that look with his eyes, like, oh, what the, whatever, we're walking, we're walking. It's so funny, I was cracking up. There were a few Star Wars uh, references, but I think the most obvious one in this episode was when uh, Vixen, Ray, and Nate, and George Lucas were in that like trash compactor in the city dump. And just like the scene from A New Hope or episode four of Star Wars, like it comes in and obviously George Lucas is looking around and saying, hey, this would be a pretty cool scene in a movie. I might use it. So just another little inspiration from the legends for Star Wars in the future. We obviously saw Rip or Phil get taken by Reverse Flash, which I was actually surprised with. I was like, oh, okay, that was, uh, that was uh, pretty random. But we see him getting like interrogated by Eobard Thorne or the Reverse Flash. 
Let's hope he doesn't get too hurt as we see him about to get tortured by both Malcolm Merlin and Damien Duck as the episode comes to an end. But I thought it was funny that Vixen suggested watching Howard the Duck as a movie to watch from the catalogue of George Lucas movies. So is that like a little stab at Marvel possibly because Howard the Duck is a Marvel Comics property? I don't know, maybe. Now the next episode is called The Legion of Doom and will apparently from what I've heard be from the perspective or point of view from the Legion of Doom. So this could be the episode where we possibly finally, hopefully eventually get Captain Cold like in the flesh. If he was to appear, it would most likely be at the end, sort of like an end credit scene, similar to that scene where uh, Rip or Phil is being interrogated by Reverse Flash. But I think if Captain Cold is going to finally come in, I think the perfect episode to come in at would be an episode called The Legion of Doom. So hopefully it does happen. But I will try and get a trailer breakdown out for that. Hopefully I will. Um, I will definitely have a Flash one out as my next video after this one. And I will try and get a Legends one out before Arrow tomorrow. But if I can't, then I'll do it a day after, around sometime then. But overall, I thought this episode was really fun. You know, including George Lucas and Star Wars into it all, I thought it was great. I think this was a really, really strong mid-season premiere, similar to Supergirl and The Flash. So I think the DC CW shows are three for three in regards to their mid-season premieres, which is always great news. Now, Legends only has eight more episodes after this compared to the other shows, which have like, you know, 12 or 13 left. So yeah, it's got a shorter season, but you know, that can be a good thing because it compresses the story a bit more. You don't get filler episodes for the most part. We might get one or two quote-unquote filler episodes for Legends of Tomorrow for the rest of the season. But seeing that the big bad for this season is a group of villains, I don't think we'll get that. I think they're really going to try and involve the Legend of Doom basically in every single episode, which is going to be awesome. But thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like on it. It'd be very much appreciated. Let me know in the comments section below what was your favorite part of the episode and what was a Star Wars or Indiana Jones Easter egg that you saw that I did not see. I only mentioned one or two here. But uh, make sure to leave any that you saw in the comment section below as well. And if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.